Hello and welcome to another Drug Chug episode. Today we'll talk about amiodarone and how it works, plus some pharmacology. Let's get right into it. Here's a breakdown of everything in this video. There'll be timestamps down below and a short quiz at the end to see what we retained. Okay, so to first understand amiodarone, we need to have a quick overview. Amiodarone is known as an antiarrhythmic which basically means if a patient has an irregular heartbeat, we use amiodarone to make that irregular heartbeat regular. So it works on the heart. And when we take a look at the heart, it works in either one or two arrhythmic ways. We have the top of the heart for atrial arrhythmias, and then we have the bottom of the heart where the ventricles are for ventricular arrhythmias. And these are a lot more deadly and more intense and require more patient care and quicker care than the atrial arrhythmias. So when we talk about antiarrhythmics, there's a lot of different antiarrhythmic agents out there. And the way we classify them is with something called the Vaughn Williams classes. And basically they're broken up into four different groups. Amiodarone is in class three. And what that means is it blocks potassium channels on the heart. Now there's also class one, which blocks sodium channels, class two, which blocks the beta receptor, and then class four, which blocks calcium channels. So even though amiodarone is technically a class three, it actually blocks every single type of channel. So it blocks the potassium sodium, beta, and the calcium channels. And because it could do all of these things, it's actually a very popular antiarrhythmic. And that's why we see it being used in both the hospital and in the community when a patient picks up their prescription. So let's go a step further and let's talk about the mechanism of action. So we know it blocks all these channels and receptors, which sounds great. But when we take a look at the heart, we have to know that it's very complex, right? It's the thing that keeps us alive. So it has to be made pretty well to last us 100 years or however old you get. So when you take a look at the heart, essentially you have the myocytes, which is the heart muscles, and they contract in a certain way. And you also have your pacemaker cells that actually start the impulse to contract the heart. Now, I don't want to get too deep into this just because I could make a whole separate video on this alone. But here is a picture of the way the muscles contract in the heart. You see this peak where it's red. This is where the sodium channels open up. Then we see calcium being released. And then when it drops off where it's green is where we see the potassium start leaking out. So here we have a way to control the channels in the heart to control the rhythm of the heart. So when amiodarone is taken, we block those potassium channels, which is part of the conduction. We block the sodium channels, which also slow down the conduction. We have our calcium channel blocker, right? Just like verapamil and diltiazem, it also slows down the heart rate. And on top of that, it also works on our beta receptors, just like our beta blockers, like metoprolol or propanolol. It slows down the heart rate. So amiodarone, working collectively with all these different ways, it really helps to control the heart when there's an irregular heartbeat. So now that we have a gist of how amiodarone works, when do we actually use it? Well, the first one is when a patient has ventricular fibrillation. And you might hear this as V-fib. And this is a type of ventricular arrhythmia where the bottom part of the heart, the ventricles, rapidly keep opening and closing, causing bad blood flow through the heart. And a patient could easily rush to the hospital within minutes when V-fib begins. Or we could use it for other ventricular tachycardias. So 
this is more of a general statement. There are multiple types of arrhythmias, but specifically ventricular tachycardias apart from V-fib could also be an indication to use amiodarone. And then we do see some off-label uses with amiodarone. We have patients that have supraventricular arrhythmias, and that just means above the ventricles, so the atria. But this is more off-label. And then we do see some patients that had a heart attack, so a myocardial infarction, be put on amiodarone as well. But again, this is also off-label, so you won't see this as much. So now that we know when we use amiodarone, we need to talk about the dosing and the adjustments and the way it comes. So the first thing you have to know is it comes in IV and in tablet dosage forms. So that means we could use it in the ICU, or we can have a patient go home with tablets in their pocket. Now, one thing to note here, there is a conversion. So if you go from PO, which is by mouth, to IV, it's about 50%. This isn't set in stone. It varies from hospital to hospital. And because amiodarone has a long half-life, we still need to monitor the patient after the conversion. Amiodarone comes in multiple different brand names. Two of the most common is Pacerone and Nexerone. If you look at Pacerone, it's kind of like pacemaker or pace of the heart, so you know it's for an arrhythmia. So let's talk about the supraventricular arrhythmia dosing. So here we want to give a loading dose of 300 milligrams IV over the first hour. And then we need to titrate that down to 10 to 50 milligrams an hour over 24 hours. And then we could let the patient go home with 100 to 200 milligram tablets daily. And that's for the supraventricular arrhythmias. So remember the top of the heart. So now let's talk about the ventricular arrhythmias. And remember, these are the more life-threatening arrhythmias because if a patient starts feeling V-fib or a ventricular arrhythmia, they're going to feel it and feel it fast because the blood supply is critically impaired. And when we have a patient that has amiodarone, they take an oral loading dose of 800 to 16 milligrams daily until they have a therapeutic response. And this is in divided doses. And then they follow that with a maintenance dose of 600 to 800 milligrams daily, and that's for about a month. And then they follow that again with 400 milligrams daily. So the goal here is to give a big loading dose for both arrhythmias and then slowly titrate it down to a maintenance dose. So now we need to talk about the side effects of amiodarone. And remember, earlier we said it works very well, it does all these things, but it does have a darker side. And with amiodarone, most of these side effects are dose-dependent, meaning the more or the longer a patient takes the drug, the more likely these side effects will occur. And the most serious we'll start with is the pulmonary fibrosis side effect, which basically means the lung tissue becomes fibrosed or scarred after prolonged use. So we have to be careful in our COPD and our asthma patients. The other thing is it could be hepatotoxic to the liver. So we need to watch out for patients that have impaired liver or continue to monitor their liver function tests. We could also see amiodarone cause hyper or hypothyroidism. And the reason for this is if I show you the structure of amiodarone, it has four iodine structures attached to it. And the iodine is what causes either hyper or hypothyroidism in your thyroid gland. The next thing to look out for is something called corneal deposits in the eye. So it could start precipitating this deposit and it'll be visible in the eye, obstructing some view. And ironically, we could also see amiodarone cause arrhythmias. Yes, we said it's used to prevent or to fix arrhythmias, but if we block too many channels in the heart, it might actually start an arrhythmia. I know it's counterintuitive, 
but that's just how it works. And the last thing is something very unique. It's called blue gray discoloration. Some people call it, you know, the Smurf side effect. Basically, the patient turns blue and it's the whole body. You see it in the face, the arms, and it's something very unique to amiodarone to know and watch out for. All right, so quick summary just to recap everything we learned. So we talked about amiodarone and how it's used for atrial arrhythmias, so the top of the heart, and ventricular arrhythmias, the bottom of the heart, which are a lot more life-threatening. We talked about how it works and how it's a class 3 antiarrhythmic because it blocks the potassium channel, sodium channel, calcium channel, and the beta receptors, so it does everything. We then talked about dosing and how it comes in IV and tablet form, and the conversion from tablet to IV is 50%. Then we went into the side effects, and remember, it could affect the lungs, the liver, the thyroid, it could affect your heart, it can cause an arrhythmia, or this very unique side effect where the patient turns blue. So now that we've gone through everything, let's take a short quiz to see what we retained. Question one, which class of antiarrhythmics does amiodarone belong to? Question two, which channel and or receptors does amiodarone work on? Question three, which of the following is not a side effect of amiodarone? Question four, true or false, amiodarone can help fix arrhythmias? as well as cause them.